welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. This is a very in-depth conversation, one that you cannot afford to miss, truly. So today's episode is dedicated to Cyber Hackers Are Heartless. We have Michael Nugier, who is joining us today. Michael is the Director of Cybersecurity with Ide Bailey. And again, uh, today is dedicated to this topic. Tomorrow is dedica dedicated to the topic, as well as the next day. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week. I'm so excited to have Michael with us. And of course, Julia Patrick is here. Julia is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And if you joined us for the Chitty Chat Chat, you learned that all three of us are nerds and we are really looking forward to getting nerdy today on today's topic and today's episode Again, we would not be able to bring this broadcast to you live as well as the recordings if it weren't for our presenting sponsors. So you can see their logos right in front of you. We encourage you to check them out. They exist to help you move your mission forward in the best possible way to serve your community. So thank you to our presenting sponsors. And again, please do check them out online. Uh, they, they want to help you and they want to help you elevate and sustain your mission. And back to our guest today, again, Michael Nugier joins us as the Director of Cybersecurity with Ide Bailey. Michael, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I love, I love talking about cybersecurity and then this, the nerd uh, uh, glasses. I'm super excited about those too. So I can put those back on. Let's let the nerd out today. Yeah, okay, let's well, out. You, were, you were in good company, right? And uh, we will make sure that you get a pair of these, Michael, because I do believe you've earned them. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it, it's a crown to, you know, to be proud yes. of. Not a backhanded compliment. I get it. It's a crown. <laughs> it, it's a crown. Yeah, absolutely. Michael, tell us a little bit about your journey and your role within I Bailey. Yeah, so I, you know, I've been... Uh, the IT person in my family since the day that we bought a computer back when I was like four, right? And so uh, really sparked the interest. At one point in my life, I thought, I don't want to do IT. I'm going to be a doctor. And that that obviously didn't turn out for me. Um, and so growing up with, with computers and IT and working uh, working with that, I, I was always the per the go-to person to fix something when it broke. And, and, and getting that knowledge and growing up into that uh, led me to a career in, in IT in general. And so I uh, spent a lot of time working um, across a, a ton of different organizations and, and higher education and state governments. Uh, finally got into uh, my foot in the door with cybersecurity and I, and I worked in the state government uh, running certain aspects of cybersecurity there. Uh, transitioned into the consulting side uh, because I, I felt there was more, more to do, more people I could help. Uh, if, I, if I'm talking about my why, it's that I really want to help people. Uh, and in doing so, I, I found my niche in cybersecurity. Uh, came over to Ide Bailey about eight months ago to work on uh, consulting services around cybersecurity. And uh, I've been here ever since helping, um, helping anybody that needs help when it comes to cybersecurity. So Ide Bailey is one of the largest uh, accounting firms in this country. Um, I find it fascinating that they as you know, financial wizards and certified public accountants and all that goes with that would identify, I'm, I'm assuming from their clients that this was such a big issue that they needed to develop a team that could assist their clients. I mean, to me, if nothing else gets imprinted upon our viewers' minds, that's how real this issue is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's top of mind more, more now than ever, right? As, as even as you watch the news, uh, right? Like $70 million, $15 million, right? It's, it's, not, it's not recorded in, in hundreds of dollars anymore. It's, it's in um, business ending amounts essentially. And so that, that, uh, that, that led a lot of Ide Bailey's clientele to say, hey, we want to focus on cybersecurity and as such right here we are uh we've we've offered cybersecurity services now for about five years and we're we're focused on um building best practices with any of our clients and um moving them forward right as a 
as uh, I'd barely was an accounting firm, right? We're focused on technology consulting and business advising and uh, our CPAs financial uh, services as well. It's wow. very forward thinking and yeah. it's very proactive. And I'm sure maybe the service line came from a reactive state, as Julia said, identifying the risk that exists. And I'm curious if you we could just start with what are the types of cyber threats that may impact our organization? What are they? And talk to us, if you would, as like we have no idea really what these <laughs> cybersecurity, you know, threats may be, because I have I have a feeling some are completely wow. unknown to me and many of our viewers. Right. Well, I, I have to start with ransomware, obviously. Right. We've all seen that in the news. It's impacted um, hundreds and thousands of organizations. But in the news alone, we've seen that impacting uh, every industry. Uh, and, and upwards of, right, we've seen $70 million with the Kaseya ransomware that came out around July 4th this year, um, right? That is, that, is, that is what is driving conversations today around cybersecurity. I don't want to be ransomware uh, but but I just as, want to say that has no relation to me. <laughs> right. Because right, her name is Jared Rand. has no relation to this. Yes. Right. And, and to, to describe what ransomware is, right, it's, it's when an attacker takes control of your data uh, and, and encrypts it or, or makes it unreadable to you and then holds it ransom and you can't get it back until you pay them or they'll actually do extortion and say, we'll release your data to the public. Um, and, and so that, that's, that's, what, that's front of mind for every business manager, business owner uh, at, at this point is we don't wanna get ransomware. Um, but again, it is just a small portion of the cyber threat landscape that, that's out there right now. Uh, I have a question. Wait, Go for wait, it. Back yeah. up. So when you say data, I mean, I think a lot of us in the nonprofit sector, were like credit card numbers from donors or whatever, but it's not just that, right? I mean, it can be a lot of different things or, or is it, does it tend to be a certain type of data? So it, sorry to like, no, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, attackers on average spend about 200 days inside of an organization before even being recognized. So they understand what data there is that, that is most important to you. So it might be donor information. It might be donor financial data. It could be your email communications, whatever they determine is the most important, right? Uh, oftentimes it's, it's financially motivated about 80 to 90% of the time it's financially motivated. And so, um, right. It, it, it in the nonprofit industry, it's more than likely something to do with the financial impact, understanding how to how to get the most money out of this attack. Wow. Okay, I, I'm kind of sad that I interrupted you because that just turns my stomach. <laughs> right, right. That's uh, what you asked, right? I'm, okay. I, I'm I'm going to scare everybody, and then at the at the end, on the third day, we're going to provide a lot of hope and best practices. So. <laughs> Well, it is the month to scare everyone, so it's it's all good timing, and yeah, I, I am glad you asked that, Julia, because again, I think many of us hear of this concept and maybe have not experienced a, um, a cyber threat, but I do know several that have even, well, I, I don't want to um, quantify, I was going to say, even as minimal as like hacking into someone's a website, but that's even, that's not minimal. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. Nope. Yeah. I mean, websites are publicly facing. Anybody can access them from anywhere in the world from an internet connection. And so that, that exposes your organization to some extent because you have to have, right. And the, the statistics were clear 15 or 20 years ago, you have to have a website to be successful mm -hmm. in, in any business. And then 10 years ago, it was, you have to have uh, a social media presence in order to be successful as a business. Fast forward 10 years from there, you have to focus on cybersecurity in order to be successful in business right now. So, Wow. Okay. So I interrupted you. And before I go on to the next question, you've identified, you know, going after data, ransomware, our websites, any other types of threats that we need to be thinking about just in a holistic way. Right. I mean, come Holistically, on, it's high level, high level. There's two, there's two, two attack vectors that we're focused on. The technical, which is your ransomware, 
uh, you know, somebody hacking into your environment, the public exposure, and then there's the human element. And that human element is often exploited through the concept of social engineering, which is the phishing emails, right? And a lot of organizations are familiar with, with the term phishing. Um, and that's where somebody creates an email to look legitimate in order to gain uh, credentials or your username and password, or to have you download a file to run malware in that organization. That's actually the most common attack vector in, in, uh, in cybersecurity right now, is that phishing. And that is coming, um, this is a question. So <laughs> that's yeah. also coming by way of text messages now. Is that correct? Yeah, I literally just got one before we started <laughs> the show. It said that oh, I won a hundred and fifty dollar Costco yeah. gift card. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I too have received those, not today, but before stating, you know, did you um you recently use your card because we've identified fraudulent activity? Click mm -hmm. this link. And I'm like, no way. Am I clicking? Yeah, don't click the link. That's the <laughs> number one word of advice. Don't click the link. Don't click the link. So what yeah. do we do um in case? of these phishing scams or emails, text messages, carrier pigeon, however they're coming to us these days? Yeah, education and training are the most important, right? You have to educate. And I, and I separate education and training because training is usually the automated, you're watching somebody talk at you or it's click to the next slide, right? Education is getting feedback from somebody that understands and being able to have a dialogue back and forth. Okay. Uh, and so, Education training is, is um, the number one thing as as a as a end user, as somebody with a cell phone or a laptop or whatever, right? Don't click the link. If it's too good to be true, it's probably not true, right? You did not, you're you're if you're not expecting a FedEx package, don't click the link. Right. If if you're if if you want a five hundred dollar gift card, it's probably too good to be true. Those that's mostly what what it comes down to is most people want the Nigerian prince that has a $10 billion endowment for them, right? Yeah. It's, you know, third cousin thrice removed. But oh realistically, that's, you know, like, it's too good to be true. Let's not send them our financial information. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I love that. Because we do have more and more viewers um, coming to us from Africa and the Middle East. And right. I've had them say, you know, that Nigerian prince scam has ruined us as a country. Right. Because when they, they go out to do legit work, mm -hmm. they have that cloud and it's, it's a real bummer, but anyway, yeah, they have okay. to overcome that stigma and it's, and it's, you know, soon it's going to be the text messaging and it's going to transition and we'll sh soon forget about the, the prints, but <laughs> it'll be something else. It'll move into right. another challenge. What are some of the challenges that make us as a sector, Michael, more vulnerable to these threats? Right, so non nonprofit as an industry is is unique because you exist in every other industry. So you have the threats of being a nonprofit and having um, having the the donor information, requesting um, grants and whatever it might be. But you also exist in a secondary industry most of the time, right? A lot of nonprofits profits exist in in the medical or healthcare industry, and so they suffer both from the the threats that target nonprofits. Uh, and, and target donor information, and also the threats that target, say, healthcare or, or whatever other industry it might be. Uh, and so it's it's almost a, a, a twofold attack that they're they're getting targeted at. Wow. Okay, that's another like, because I never thought of the, thought of us in that way. Right. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it. It's really interesting. And there's there's a, a different type of complexity in nonprofits, right? Because you you are garnering um, donation based funding, right? You also want to make sure that you are serving your donors well by keeping your expenses lower, uh, mm -hmm. and right, you don't want to have fifty percent expenses, fifty percent payout, right? If you if that's the type of nonprofit you are, and so you want to focus on how do we keep our expenses low? Should cybersecurity be considered or not? And oftentimes, and it, it, it usually is pushed back. Actually, I read a statistic today that um, executive directors and CEOs of nonprofits uh, were were surveyed, and only 29% of them plan to increase their cybersecurity spend over the next year. Yeah. 
So one of the one of the service lines I offer as a consultant is strategic planning. And I have this model that includes administrative and that administrative model or circle of the model, Michael, actually includes technology and cybersecurity comes up quite a bit, especially as we're moving and seeing trends of giving like monthly donations. And so there's a storage of uh, credit card information somewhere or, you know, electronic transfers. We've had on the show uh, someone that's doing cryptocurrency donations. So that yep. adds another level of complexity and financial component. Um, and so really looking at the technology as a strategy for the organization is a huge potential risk. So how do we get ahead of that? You know, like what, I'm curious if you would recommend that we audit our technology or do some type of an assessment. Like what should we be thinking from the lens of potential hacking? Yeah, so I, I get that question often and I usually rephrase it to, if I had a dollar to spend on cybersecurity, where should I spend this dollar? Okay. Uh, and and wow. every time I say on, on, on vision and visibility right? You don't know where you need to be if you don't know where you currently are. We need to define or perform an assessment to understand what your current state is so we can understand where your strengths are, where your gaps exist, and how to, uh, and building out that roadmap to cover those gaps and strengthen your program, right? And so the number one thing I recommend is let's, let's start by identifying where you currently are. What is your current state? And then let's build that roadmap that, that can then uh, define your direction and your vision forward. And, and that assessment should align with the business risks and it should align with the culture of the organization as well. One of the things we've seen over this time, and, and Julie and I have seen it exponentially, as I'm sure the, the, everyone at, throughout the nation, is the advancements of technology. And it definitely feels like that has been one of the like predominant advancements over the last two years. Um, and so as technology advances, I'm assuming um, the ill will behind hackers are also advancing at parallel paces. Um, and so that to me is, is really scary. Um, what exactly can we do by way of an organization to work with I Bailey on this front? Because clearly, again, I Bailey is taking this progressive, proactive measure to help us um, to take actions when we are hacked. So what does that look like? And, and you know, even further, what does that look like with you? Yeah, so from, from our perspective, right, we want to make sure that we understand where, like I said, building out where we are and where we can go, but we want to talk about, uh, you know, I, I always hate the, the, the saying, it's not if, but when you get attacked. Uh, and so I never, I never want to lead with that in any of my conversations, but what I, what I do like to state is that as an organization, um, you have to be you have to be right every time you're getting attacked and an attacker only has to be right once to get past your defenses right yeah. and so it's not it's not enough anymore to focus on what we can do proactively um the the data is out and over the last couple of years and, and there was actually um one of the largest threat reports that's released from ibm and the Poneman institute uh stated that there is a cost savings in being prepared to respond to an attack. So rather than focusing just on the proactive, it's focusing on being prepared to respond, monitoring your network and responding to it. And I think that, right, if you have a team prepared to respond and you actually exercise that response, run through scenarios, uh, the cost savings on a data breach, if the breach even happens, is about 40%. And so, uh, because you're, you're able to mitigate it. Oh, go ahead. So back up on that, when you say it's 40%, what does that actually mean? So on average, the cost of a data breach mm -hmm. uh, in 2020 worldwide was 3.9, somewhere around $3.9 million, $3.86 million. And the United States is actually double that at 3.64 or 8.64 million, right? Teams that had, um, or, or companies that had a team prepared to respond to it quicker, uh -huh. And, and actually knew how to respond to it, saved 40% on that 3.64 or $3.86 million. 
Wow. Right. They spent around 1.9 to $2 million instead. And so, um, right. <laughs> being able to mitigate it quicker, being able to stop the attack lessens that impact. Right. And so that I, I never want to focus on proactive measures and prevention holistically, because as I said, realistically, an attacker only has to be right once. They only have to find one chink in the armor. Yeah. They only have to find in right in the case of phishing, as I mentioned, the human element is the easiest to attack because somebody somewhere will fall victim to a phishing attack. And that so, is where they will get in. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Someone unfortunately will say, oh, maybe I did order a FedEx, you know. Something. Right. And I should click the link and then log in. And now you have my credentials. So, yeah, it's. So, <sighs> you know, I, I got to ask this and we don't have that much time left. Um, yep. I mean, you've, I'm really thrilled that as stressful as this is to hear all this, that we have you for three days because. <laughs> I know that the minute we're off this episode, I'm going to be thinking about additional questions. So just be prepared. Yeah, <laughs> Please absolutely. <show> up. <laughs> Please show up for the next two days. So I, I'm one thought I have in my head is that, um, is it inappropriate to say, I'm a small nonprofit. Who would ever want to deal with me or hurt me? Is this, are we just talking about like the national federated chaptered kind of organizations are we talking about miss betty's bunny rescue and buckeye i mean <laughs> where are we right. so we creation i love i love slogans like hackers are heartless uh one of the other things i state is in in uh, lazy is the wrong word but hackers are lazy they're opportunistic and so right going after a big fish to try and get a multi-million dollar ransomware takes a lot of time and effort small businesses and nonprofits that state, oh, I'm too small to be attacked, are, are the, the target for mm -hmm. most attackers because it's a quicker payout and it might not be millions of dollars. It could be 10, 15, 20, $50,000. But that, that, is, that is what a hacker wants to hear is I'm too small or I'm not a target anymore. Uh, and so realistically speaking, they are. And, and as we see, about 50 to 60% of organizations have experienced a cyber attack in the last 12 months. And of those that, that were small businesses, 60% of those will go out of business in the next 12 months if they experience a data breach. So, yeah. One of the things I see, unfortunately, all too often, Michael, is um, a mirrored account of uh, an online fundraising campaign, right? So yeah. disaster strikes oh, yeah. where there is opportunity and someone goes out and creates a similar, or as I referred to, kind of a mirrored campaign that is just similar enough to really be deceptive um, and those potentially, Julia, are some of the smaller organizations. Yeah. They could be larger as well. Are you seeing this happening more and more, Michael? And is that considered a cyber hack? Or is it like, how would you classify those, those instances? That tends to fall under like fraud, right? Okay. As, as they're, they're mimicking and copying the, or impersonating your fundraising site and everything along those lines. And it's, and it's hard, to, it's hard to, to stop because they haven't technically hacked your organization in any way other than looking at how your website was built. And so building out an intricate marketing plan, right? This is the non-technical side of it, an intricate marketing plan, detailed, um, detailed websites that are not easy to uh, attack, and then having a, a team that might be able to send a cease and desist uh, is, is helpful in, in that, those arenas too, so. Interesting. Interesting that you use the word fraud versus hack, because I agree with you, Jared. I, I've heard this more and more from um, organizations, and I agree. Generally, they're disaster-oriented things where, you know, yes. CNN is reporting, you know, this just happened in this town, and, you know, you can help out this community or whatever. We've seen, we're seeing that a lot. Yes, and that, that ties back into the heartless nature of hackers, right? Yeah. Uh, if there is if there is an opportunity to create a fraudulent website or to attack somebody when they're at their weakest, that is what that is what uh, hackers will do. Hospitals during uh, the last eighteen months have been a massive target. In October of 2020, there were there was a massive ransomware campaign, and it actually hit uh, over 
uh, probably I think 10 hospitals from, uh, and each of the ransoms were up to $1 million, right? And everybody's running around uh, focused on life support and, and technology to save lives and not focusing on cybersecurity. And, and as such, hackers are heartless and they kicked them when they were down. Yeah, wow. Okay, well, I need to like relax after this episode. <laughs> yep. um, you know, going forward with you, um, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. We're going to be talking over the next couple of days about the cultural nature. Like, how do we get our entire team to understand why we need to be doing things a certain way, how we behave, how we educate ourselves? We're going to also be talking about best practices so that we can um, be a lot more engaged in the process and not just um, responsive to some sort of uh, crisis. And so I'm really appreciative um, that you're gonna be doing this with us. I also wanna to witness to everybody that Michael is in three different cities each one of these days. So today you are in? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tomorrow. <laughs> you even know, Michael, it's like, oh, I'm not sure. What day is this? <laughs> so, yeah. So Minnesota and tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be in Mankato, Minnesota, which is about an hour and a half south of Minneapolis. Okay, okay. and then on the third day? On Wednesday, I, or is it Thursday? I will be in back in Denver, back home. Okay. Get to see my beautiful kids' faces. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, here's Michael's information, Director of Cybersecurity for Ide Bailey. You know Ide Bailey as a, a really important national accounting firm. Um, they have over 350 accountants just dealing with the nonprofit sector, which I think is absolutely fascinating. And to me, as we led our program today, I think this is such an indication of how big this issue has become. If an organization that's an accounting organization can see that it's something that is becoming a financial reality to their clients that would lead into this type of practice. I'm, I'm fascinated by it, actually. Yeah, it's, really hap amazing. it's happening too often. And, you know, while we might be experiencing some uncomfort by this, you know, it's really comforting knowing, Michael, that you exist, mm -hmm. other cybersecurity nerds exist. Again, huge compliment. And uh, for us to have you in the sector and for I Bailey to dedicate your level yeah. of expertise to us in the sector is very comforting um, because typically nonprofits, right? We do what we do because we have a huge passion to provide a solution to the community. And our passion is often not cybersecurity and mitigating uh, technology threats. So thank you for sharing with us today what types of threats exist and then what those challenges are within our organization that makes us a little bit more vulnerable. And then also those actions that we can take um, when we are hacked. And, you know, Julia, we love statistics and that 40% oh I have a feeling is going to come up in one of our ask and answered because um, that is really a, a good thing to know is that it's not about being proactive. It's about taking that action and, and making the action do what it's intended to do when that happens so that you can save on um, on that threat. So thank you, Michael, and to I Bailey uh, for sharing your time and your talents with us today. Absolutely, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure talking. Well, you're not done yet, my friend. Oh no, no, I'm not. Better I know. Show up because my hair's on fire, and I'm going to have a lot more questions for you. Hey, yeah. you know, we're going to have Michael back here for the next two days. So be thinking about um, how you and your organization might be impacted by this because if not, when? Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I've been joined by the other nerd in the room, the nonprofit nerd, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. Again, we wanna thank all of our presenting sponsors. Without you, we would not be here having this discussion. Thank you ever so much. We want to also let you know that we are uh, running our annual viewer survey. So we'll be talking more about that, but um, we really do want to know the types of information and discussions that you need for the health and the safety and security. 
and the growth of your nonprofit. So be looking for that. Wow, Jarrett, this has been really interesting and something that we haven't really talked about. No, we haven't, but we're talking about it a lot this week. I'm so grateful. And I hope that you will come back even beyond this week, Michael, regardless of where you might be in Minnesota or throughout the nation. I'm so grateful to have I'd Bailey's commitment to this um, and to the commitment to the sector at large. So thank you, Michael, and to your entire team. Absolutely. Thank you uh, for having me on too. Well, well it's been, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Join us tomorrow as we talk about this conversation, but we will be talking about different things and giving you ideas. So no matter the size of your organization, what you are doing within the nine main sectors of the nonprofit world, I think that this is really a valuable time to um, commit to learning and kind of exploring how we could deal with heartless hackers. Hey, everybody, it's been a great day. Thanks so much already. As we like to remind everybody as we sign off for the day, stay well so you can do well. <laughs>